Hi, uh, hey, how's it going, my friends? Um, in this video, we're gonna make a machine that taps, a finger tapping machine, that is.
tapped your finger on the office table until one of your fingers snapped off clean from your hand? Well, I sure know I had. Well, fear not, since I have a solution for you. Presenting the finger tapping machine. It taps the finger so you don't have to. It was a hell of a project, it was really really fun, it was quite difficult at times, surprisingly not that difficult in the places I thought it would be. I mean obviously the gears were quite difficult to make, this is the first time I made gears, I always wanted to make a, a machine like that with, with moving parts and all and uh, um, yeah, and obviously the gears took a, took a while to learn how to do that, how to do it quite accurately. But I've noticed that at the very end, once you assemble everything, they have quite an allowance. They give you some, like, you can make a few errors here or there in accuracy, and they just work. They don't skip T's, they don't get stuck that much. Um, I mean, they, they don't get stuck at all, to be honest. Uh, I don't know, it kind of worked out. I think it's also due to me making um, kind of a more uh, ancient style of gears where they just triangular 60 degree teeth uh, rather than those round modern type gears. Um, so yeah, that's that. The most trouble I've had with this thing is the most insignificant part about it is the, actually the kind of beech wood cubes holding the whole mechanism to the base. Well, I suppose they're quite important, but I've tried so many things to do it differently. I've, I've made this kind of, used this small mahogany type, wood type and uh, kind of shaped these two holes that can hold the mechanism simultaneously, like on the Y-axis and 
Wow! Anyway, <laughs> they were quite difficult. I spent the whole day just doing these two little cubes with four holes in them. And uh, other kind of, well, I wouldn't say an issue, but like, um, I just found this wood online and it was quite cheap for this block. I mean, it's not mega cheap, but it was like, I don't know, 10 euros, which is like $12 or so. And, uh, and uh, this, it's called, uh, it's an African paduk, it's called paduk. And it's, it's, it's super nice. It's like, I, I, the first time I opened it, it was amazing. Amazing piece of wood. Like the color, it looks like it was, it's radioactive or whatever. Or something like that. Uh, and then I was, I checked online before I got it. I checked on the, on the database to see how hard this wood is. And it's pretty hard. And it's resistant to dances very high. So this kind of scared me. I thought like, okay, carving this thing would be a nightmare. I won't be able, I will just put it aside and wait, wait until I do something else with it. Fortunately, it was pretty nice. Uh, it accepted carving pretty well, actually, and surprisingly very good. Problem is, it's not the best wood for, when, when at least when you use hand tools, it's not the best wood to kind of shape geometrically as you might say. I found it, uh, even though it's very, it's a very strong wood, it's a very dense wood, the layers of it, like the grain or the rings of the wood, are kind of loosely held together. And so it splits, even if I go with the grain, like, we just, the blade digs in. And um, something that with the other woods I never had a problem with. And with this one, it when it splits, it splits all the way. So that's the thing, I'm not sure I'm gonna keep on working with this wood since uh, this problem and there was, I also read online that it loses its color over time, so uh, I also read that they, they say that shellac is quite a good protection, so yes, because I love shellac. Um, but still, it loses a bit of wood, the dust is not really nice, the dust stains everything orange, which can be pretty sometimes, but can also be pretty bad. Um, and yeah, that's about the wood, but uh, I think next time if I will do a major carving project, I will look to use something else, even though I really want something orangey-ish. So if you have any suggestions, please let me know. Um, I probably will intend to use uh, linden or basswood in, in America. So, thank you for staying this long to see the video. I hope you like me blabbering a little bit after the video. If you don't, you don't have to watch this, I suppose. And uh, um, But uh, I think it's important to say what I have to say. I think it gives a little bit more insight on, uh, on the project and what I've learned. These are not... Uh, this is not really a tutorial or anything like that. Has, uh, it's more like just to let you know what I've learned throughout the project and what mistakes I've made and errors uh, so you can uh, um, You know Have a bit of an easier time if you approach this anyway. Hopefully I see you next time and uh,